forced resignation from the DNC already causing chaos in the streets of Philadelphia, Heather. So what kind of fallout can we expect here to weigh in? Democratic strategist Corinne Jean-Pierre and managing editor of the Washington Free Beacon, Aaron McLean. Thank you both for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning. <laughs> this morning. Good morning. So uh, a little bit of chaos, you could say, Corrine, this morning as we wake up and the convention <laughs> is just beginning. Um, so what do you think the fallout will be this week? Look, I, you know, chaos, no. Distraction on the eve of the convention, yes, most definitely. But look, tonight we're going to have Bernie Sanders, who's going to be speaking. He's going to be the keynote speaker. He's going to do exactly what um, Hillary Clinton did in 2008 for then Senator Barack Obama, which is lean in and make sure that he delivers his delegates to uh, to us, to Hillary Clinton. When I say deliver, meaning like make sure they unify behind, behind her. And so I think that's really important to note. And he's still in. He understands the importance of making sure that um, in November we reject Donald Trump, unlike last week with Ted Cruz, who actually told his delegates to vote their conscience. So I think, uh, you know, I think a distraction on the eve of the of the convention, most definitely. But we're going to unify our party and we'll see a, a very stark difference from what we saw last week. Aaron, though, you put this in perspective. Hillary Clinton has waited for this moment for this week for many years now, and she was hoping that they would be talking about her today, talking about Tim Kaine, talking about her message. Talk to us about how bad the timing is here. I mean, this came out less than 24 hours before this convention kicks off in Philadelphia. That's absolutely devastating timing. It couldn't possibly have been worse right as the uh, party is trying to project some unity. I mean, I think Karina's right to question whether or not this is going to rise to the level of a, of a Ted Cruz type event. And I think we all expect that Bernie, having already endorsed Hillary, will continue in that vein. That said, the question is not only about Bernie. What else we're going to see tonight, according to her statement, Debbie Wasserman Schultz will still gavel in the convention today. So what's going to happen behind me on the convention floor when that happens? Uh, are Bernie delegates going to applaud politely? Is there going to be some kind of uh, uh, unrest or dissatisfaction? Who knows? I mean, I think the potential for more blowback is certainly there. Yeah, I was very interested that, that she was still going to open and end the convention. I was surprised, Corrine, were right. you, that she was still going to do that? Do you think that she yeah, should have just yes, stepped I, down actually, immediately? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I was I was surprised as well. But look, I think the two things that need to come out of this convention is making sure that we unify our base and also talk beyond our base, right? Mm -hmm. The jumpstart uh, into the general election. So I think that is going to happen. And also, we have to remember the Democrats has a big tent. We're going to have the Mich Michelle Obama speaking tonight, and we saw what she did for the president in, back in 2012. She gave this amazing speech. I was there. I was on the floor. I watched it. Um, so I think she'll do the same thing this time around. We're going to have the vice president we're going to have the president on wednesday so we and we have elizabeth warren at some point this week as well so we have a big tent and i think that'll continue and the the, the job for right now for the for the, the dnc and for the hillary campaign is to make sure that we we unify you know there was so much talk about the disarray within the gop era and, and how divided the party is and here we are going into the democratic convention and with this all breaking you know the bernie sanders supporters many of them not happy as we just heard from Doug McElway protesting in the streets likely over the next few days. Which party is more divided at this point? Well, look, uh, I mean, everyone was expecting the protests in Cleveland to be a big deal. They pretty much fizzled out. There really wasn't much going on there. Already here in Philadelphia, we've had a protest just on the Sunday that was bigger than anything we saw in Cleveland. So there could be more going on in the streets in the days to come. Uh, it, it's certainly true that the Democratic Party is a big tent party, and it's true that we're going to see an impressive display of unity on the part of party dignitaries and senior party officials. But this party is such a big tent that it includes a lot of people for whom the highest priority is not electing Hillary Clinton as president, but achieving progressive change in America. America, right? Um, and there are a lot of those people who are going to be on the floor behind me, a lot of those people here at the convention. Who knows what they're going to do? Mm -hmm. And Karine, a lot uh, perhaps outside protesting as well. Which party do you think is in more disarray right now? Oh, I think most definitely. Uh, well, I'll put it this way. When you have the GOP nominee on Friday saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to put together a super PAC to go after my rivals, one of the rivals being the governor of Ohio, one of the most important uh, battleground states, for, especially for a Republican, because you, you can't win, you can't win the, the White House without Ohio. I think that, that, that answers that question right there. Well, never a dull moment in this election yeah. cycle, that is for sure. <laughs> Kareem, right. Jean-Pierre, and McLean, thanks so much for being with us. I think we'll see you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll see yeah, what else so is in those 20,000 emails right. that were sent or received.